I'm going to be t discussing Albert Bandura tonight and his philosophy of education. So Albert Bandura was actually born in 1925 and died this year. Um, he has a ton of recent uh, research that we can actually still use today. So um, his education, he actually grew up in a very small town. Um, he is the son of two immigrant parents. They immigrated here from Canada. And he says that he credits most of his education from learning by himself, basically. So he says that that kind of helped him when he went to further his education at the University of British Columbia, where he received his bachelor's because he had he knew how to study and he knew how to teach himself. So he was able to dig a little bit deeper than the professors provided. Um, he received an award in psychology in his undergrad, and then he moved on to the University of Iowa where he received his master's and his doctorate. Then he was accepted as an intern at Stanford University in California where he stayed on as a professor and did most of his research there. His philosophy of education is actually um, kind of a branch of behaviorism, but where behaviorism kind of stops, he continues with observational learning. So he kind of, you know, adds that to behaviorism, where behaviorism from Thorndike and Skinner um, kind of, he stresses the importance of observation. So his philosophy is two parts. He does say that there, you know, there's value in inactive learning, which he calls it, which is learning by trial and error, learning by doing. It's the actual action of doing something and then learning by it. But he says that higher order cognition is going to come from vicarious learning with this inactive learning. So there has to be an observational part to the learning. And that's where vicarious learning comes in. You're not directly engaged. The learner is just observing. And so they're observing what's happening and then they're um, internalizing and measuring it against their self regulation. So um, Bandura believes that the environment, which is going to be our culture, other people, it's going to be our physical interactions that we come in contact with, with our families and our friends. They're going to help develop our personal beliefs. It's our preferences, our personality, our thoughts, our intelligence. It's our cognitive ability that most of the time we do subconsciously. It's what is developed. It's our beliefs and our attributes. Those things determine our behavioral aspects, our actions, and our communications. It's those motor responses that we have from what we believe that we developed from the environment. So they're all kind of related, but most of the time Bandura believes that it's our inner, it's our um, environment that decided what our personal beliefs were, and then our personal beliefs choose our actions. But then those actions, you know, can affect our environment and they can affect our personal. So they're all interrelated. There are four stages of learning, Bandura said. So the first stage is going to be vicarious. We're observing. Then we're going to be measuring it against our self-regulation. That's the retention part. We're going to be measuring it against that personal section um, in that stage. After we have measured it, we're going to, you know, if it's worth the effort that we can put into it, then we're going to move into production. So production is going to incorporate that inactive learning. We're going to do the actual learning. We're going to do what by trial and error, what we had been observing. Once we start doing that action, we're going to continue to measure it against our self-regulation, that personal section of that um, triangle. The better the consequence, the more self-efficacy we're going to gain. If we see negative consequences, then we're going to measure it against our self-efficacy and we're going to say we're not doing that anymore. So, you know, the stages of learning, stage four is measuring it against the self-efficacy. If it's a positive consequence, it's going to be positive self-efficacy. If it's a negative consequence, it's going to be negative self-efficacy. Now, where Bandura kind of, um, there's some limits to this social cognitive theory that he has developed. And that's going to be with different learning styles and different personalities. It doesn't really, those four steps doesn't really allow for differentiation. 
Now, I discussed self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is basically how you believe you're going to do something. Are you going to do it well or not? So there are different levels of this. There's the cautious. Your decision making, you're determining if it's worth it or not. If you see positive results, you move on. You're building your self-esteem. Once your self-esteem is being built and you're continuing to see positive results, it's building your self-confidence. And then it's building your perseverance. If you see negative results or consequences, you're going to slowly start believing you can't do it. Your self-esteem is going to lower. Then your self-confidence is going to lower. Your perseverance is going to lower. So those consequences measured against your self-regulation determines your self-efficacy. So that's kind of what um, Bandura's social cognitive theory was kind of explaining. These are the references that I went through to determine this PowerPoint.